Well, hey guys, if you're new here, I'm a board certified dermatologist. And in this video, we're gonna be talking all about the signs of vitamin A deficiency. Vitamin A is a fat soluble vitamin, meaning it needs to be taken with fat in order to be absorbed into the body. It includes retinol, retinol, and retinoic acid. Altogether, these are referred to as retinoids. Vitamin A is essential for the function of your immune system and for the health of anywhere where you have an epithelial surface, your eyes, your lungs, your gut, and of course for the function of the cells in your skin. Vitamin A is fondly referred to as the anti-infection vitamin because it plays such a key role in the health of the mucosal epithelial surfaces as well as the function of your immune system. So when you don't have good vitamin A, those two things fall apart and you're really, really prone to infections like diarrhea, respiratory diseases, and vitamin A is essential for your eyes, not only for the eye itself, but for your vision. Vitamin A deficiency worldwide is the most common cause of blindness in children. Vitamin A comes from our food, from our diet. It's pretty easy to get. So vitamin A deficiency is actually not that common in developed countries, but it's really common in developing countries. We can get vitamin A from our diet, from food sources like fish, eggs, milk, or the carotenoids in leafy greens and red and yellow fruits and vegetables. Who is at risk for vitamin A deficiency? Like I said, it's not that common in developed countries, but it's really, really common in areas of the world where there's extreme poverty. And it, globally, it causes a lot of health problems. In developed countries, it's something that most of us will never encounter or see in our day-to-day -day lives. But people who are at risk for vitamin A deficiency are those who have malabsorption syndrome, so Crohn's disease, people who have a condition called cystic fibrosis, people who have chronic pancreatic inflammation, it's called pancreatitis, they also are at risk for vitamin A deficiency because it's so important in, in the absorption of vitamin A. Some chronic parasitic infections impair absorption of vitamin A, something called Giardia you may have heard of. Some people have chronic Giardia. In the hospital, patients who are um, given their nutrition through something called total parental nutrition, um, if not executed properly, they can develop uh, vitamin A deficiency as well. And then people with end-stage liver disease, it's called cirrhosis. Basically, your liver becomes scarred down and this happens most often due to alcoholism, sadly, but it also can happen due to uh, a chronic viral infection called viral hepatitis, or it can happen due to something called fatty liver or NASH. There are a lot of reasons for end-stage liver disease outside of the scope of this video, but your liver is important for producing what are called bile salts that are needed to absorb vitamin A properly, so that becomes an issue in the setting of cirrhosis. Your liver also makes proteins that are needed to transport retinol around the body, so again, that is another reason why people with cirrhosis and stage liver disease, they develop vitamin A deficiency. Chronic alcohol intake independent of liver disease can also cause vitamin A deficiency. I've talked about this before, but alcoholics, as part of their disease process, they often don't eat, and so they are at risk for a variety of vitamin and mineral and nutrient deficiencies. Certain restrictive diets can also put you at risk for vitamin A deficiency. Now, uh, Pregnancy and lactation increase the needs for vitamin A. So when we're talking about areas around the world where uh, vitamin A deficiency is such a common problem, uh, women of childbearing age are some of the most at-risk groups. Women of childbearing age and children in developing countries where vitamin A deficiency is more common, these groups are some of the most at risk because with pregnancy and lactation, vitamin A needs increase, and then children, their needs, you know, throughout development are critical. So they're some of the most at risk groups. So when it comes to the signs of vitamin A deficiency, the eyes are gonna have a lot of issue. 
uh, if you don't, or if you're not getting enough vitamin A. Something called uh, xerophthalmia, basically super dry eyes, because what happens is that vitamin A is so important for the cells in the eye itself to differentiate, basically become who they're supposed to be. It's so important for that. The cells just kind of turn sort of flat and you get really dry eyes. And if that progresses and the vitamin A deficiency is not corrected, what can happen is basically your cornea just gets really, really soft and it just liquefies. It's called keratomalacia. You get these grayish white patches on the conjunctiva of the eye. It's basically a buildup of like just kind of cellular debris because the cells are not like acting right basically. It's called a Beto spot. Now because vitamin A is so important for the production of the pigments in the retina and that's how information is transmitted to your brain about light and things, first you can develop poor night vision, but ultimately you can go blind. And like I said, uh, vitamin A deficiency worldwide is the most common cause of blindness in children. You know, like I said, vitamin A, you can think of it as the anti-infection vitamin because it's vital to how our body mounts an immune response to things, infections, and it's vital to the integrity of different epithelial surfaces like that line our lungs, our intestines, you know, our gut and our mucosal membranes, our eyes. So people who are low in vitamin A are at extreme risk for death from infections. As far as skin findings, the hallmark finding of low vitamin A, vitamin A deficiency, it's called Furnaderma or toad skin. I know it's not the kindest terminology. Anyways, it's basically the accumulation of keratin which is you know, the protein in the skin, around the hair follicle, you get these uh, rough bumps. And it starts out like on the arms and the legs and patches, uh, patches of it, this like rough skin. And it kinda, you know, to the untrained eye, it might look a little bit like that rough and bumpy skin condition that a lot of people have called keratosis pilaris, but it's not the same thing. So if you have, if you have rough and bumpy skin on your arms or thighs, you know, don't freak out that you have vitamin A deficiency. Um, <clears throat> but, it, you know, it's, it's these really, really rough bumps um, and it, it starts to involve the face, other body sites, the, the trunk, and, and then you get kind of dark uh, violet to brown patches. With vitamin A deficiency, you have generalized dry skin. Uh, it is, you know, I have a video actually on extreme dry skin, otherwise known as uh, ichthyosis vulgaris. And in that video, I mentioned that you can get you can have acquired ichthyosis vulgaris secondary to underlying medical issues, and vitamin A deficiency would be one reason for extreme dry skin. Now, when you have vitamin A deficiency, it's unlikely that that's like the only thing you're deficient in. So it's not uncommon for people with deficiencies like this to have thinning hair, telogen effluvium, which is basically shedding, you know, massive shedding of the hair. But in vitamin A deficiency, you can develop something called hair casts. It looks like lice to the untrained eye, but it's really just kind of build up of the hair keratins in like a little, little white encasing around the hair itself. And it, you know, if you, if you pick at it, it'll, it'll come off. And you can see those actually in other, other situations. It's really common for people who wear really tight braids that can develop it or with certain hairstyling products. Um, but in, in vitamin A deficiency, you, you will often see that in the hair, it can happen in the hair on the body as well, will develop these. Yeah, it sort of looks like head lice, but it's not. And when you look at it under the microscope, in, in contrast to head lice, which will just be on one side of the hair shaft, the hair cast, it encircles the hair shaft. So that, that's, you know, and plus un, unlike lice, the hair cast, it, they're gonna move, you know, when you, if you pull on them, they'll move back and forth and come off. So those are the skin findings, but the, you know, the main kind of issue with vitamin A deficiency is that it really puts the individual at a extreme risk for dying from infections. Because like I said at the start of the video, vitamin A, you can think of it as the anti-infection vitamin because of its role in not only in epithelial cell function, which is important for your lungs, your digestive tract, your eyes, but it's also essential for how the immune system executes uh, you know, fight against infection. Epithelial integrity and immune function are essential for keeping infectious things out. So when you don't have that 
as a result of vitamin A deficiency, wow, you are really prone to death from infections. And in developing countries where vitamin A deficiency is so much more common, in these areas of the world, you also have, you know, not always the best, uh, you have a lot of other issues going on in these areas of the world too, like, you know, not access to clean drinking water, um, you know, more infectious things being spread around due to just not able to execute good hygiene, um, hand washing. I mean, things that we take for granted um, can really just devastate a population of people and cause a lot of disease. It's estimated that at any given time, so right now, as of the filming of this video, me talking to you, 230 million children worldwide are at risk for vitamin A deficiency. That is a lot. And I already mentioned too, you know, women of childbearing age are also at risk for vitamin A deficiency because of the demands of pregnancy and lactation. So it's, you know, it's easy to be in a bubble when you live in a developing country and you don't see or ever have to think about vitamin A deficiency, aside from those of you who may have some chronic illnesses that put you at risk for it. But, you know, for otherwise healthy people going about our lives, this is not something that ever really has to enter our brain because we have so much access to foods. The prevalence of subclinical vitamin A deficiency in India is about 61% actually. So by subclinical vitamin A deficiency, you know, people going around maybe not necessarily with symptoms, but if they get sick, well, they're really predisposed, you know, they're really prone and vulnerable to death. But just because vitamin A is the anti-infection vitamin, don't think that you should be supplementing because unless you've been told to by your healthcare provider, like say you have an underlying medical problem that causes you to not be able to absorb it properly, but for otherwise healthy people who have no issue absorbing it from their diet, you have to be careful because supplementing with vitamin A, you can potentially get to toxic levels. It's a fat soluble vitamin, so it's gonna be stored in the liver. I've seen this before a fair amount. You know, somebody innocently thinks that they should be taking a vitamin A supplement and they, it actually can dry out your skin, lips, uh, similar to Accutane actually. Um, and it's even more of a problem if you happen to be put on something like Accutane, you know, a medication that is a form of vitamin A, then you can really run into problems. But um, yeah, there's no, you know, you can, you can definitely OD on, on uh, vitamin A supplements and it's best to get them from your food unless you've been told to supplement by your healthcare provider because you have an underlying medical reason to do so. So I hope this video was informative. On the end slate, I'm gonna put my video on the signs of B12 deficiency. So check that out if you missed it. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.